Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're going to be putting our mountaineering skills to the test in Nanga Parbat. This is a two-player game, basically an abstract game, in which you are going to be collecting animals from the board, putting out your little climbers in their place, and then building sets of animals, either all the same, all different, or groupings of your little climbers that you then have them deploy a tent and score for that. It's a very straightforward game. It's a fairly small package. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the overview. I'll see you on the other side. The players are going to be collecting these animals, putting out their climbers in the spot where the animals were, moving around this guide, and then turning in sets of animals of the same kind or different kind, or converting their climbers into these tents in order to score victory points. When the game is over, uh, then whoever has the most victory points, of course, is going to be the winner. So we're going to have the uh, blue player go here first, so the guide begins somewhere randomly, and they're going to take one of these animals, okay? So let's say I want to take uh, this one as the blue player. You're going to put it over here in the matching spot on your board. You're going to replace that spot with one of your climbers, and you're going to move the guide to the matching number peak. So I'm going to put this here. It's four. So the climber is going to go to that peak there. And then after that, you have the optional. So that was all three steps. And then the optional fourth step would be scoring, which I can't do right now. So it goes to the other player. The other player is going to do the same thing. Okay, they take one of them. They uh, put out the climber. They move the guide and so on. So uh, once you advance the game a little bit, then that final step will be to do one of these things. You can turn in sets of the same kind of animal. So say if I turn in five, I'm going to score eight victory points. You're going to mark that by putting a cube in that spot, and then it's taken. You can do different animals, or you can do uh, the guides. And I'll talk about that one. That one's a little bit different, okay, because it has to do with the positional uh, arrangement out here on the board. The animals have powers associated with them. So these four, you can move them from the top half to the bottom half on your turn to take one of the associated actions. This one lets you switch to... Uh, of the guides that are adjacent. Obviously, it only makes sense to do that when they're different colors. This one, move a guide with an animal that's adjacent, switch out any two animals anywhere, and then this one is move the guide before or after your turn so that you can take something or that you can leave your opponent somewhere else so that they can't take something. This one over here is simply wild. It can be any color for turning in sets of the same or different. And then this one, when you take it, uh, when you when it's plugged, if you have the same number of victory points or fewer than the other player, you're going to score one victory point. The way the track works over here is, if uh, this player is there and I score four victory points and I would land right on them, I go to the next spot. So only a single cube can be in any one of these, okay? The way the tents work is going to be, uh, if we have a few places already taken, let's say, let me remove some of these animals and let's say, you know, this player has taken them throughout the game there and they've been replaced with these climbers, like so. If you have a group of climbers, you can trade them in for the tents. So they have to be adjacent, okay? So these are adjacent. If this guy was here, that's also a group of three adjacent. And that even includes the lines on the board. So if this character was here and there was another one there that was pink, then that's also a group of adjacency uh, four, in this case, that are adjacent, following the little white dotted lines, okay? So you pull them off, you put them in the box, you put tens in their place, and in that case, it would be a group of four. So I'm going to score five victory points as listed right here. There's uh, The, the game's going to be over when somebody, or, or both players rather, are out of climbers or scoring cubes. You've done then, and you score, if you want to, some end game points, which I do recommend. It's a variant in the rule book, but you can do that, which is you go peak by peak, starting from one, ending in six down there, and you are going to see how much uh, space you occupy. If you have four of the spots, you're going to get one point, and that can be with the characters, with the climbers, or the tents. Okay, both count. That's one point if you control four. If you control five spaces, that's two points. And if you control an entire peak with your colored pieces, that is three bonus points. You do that, you figure out who's got the most victory points, and that is the game. So let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. At first blush, this game reminded me very much of a game that came out from uh, Bruno Catala and Blue Orange Games. 
many years ago called Longhorn, which is also a two-player game, basically an abstract. That one has a Western theme in which you are collecting little wooden it's cows in that game and uh, sort of forcing your opponent to do something specific based on what you did on your turn to, to a certain degree, okay? But everywhere that game succeeds in the cleverness, the tightness, the uh, sort of traps you can lay for your opponents, every one of those that that game is able to bring to the table, this one fails in that area. Uh, and I found it to be um, just lacking in, in excitement and engagement, uh, basically across the board. So let's break it down, shall we? I'm just going to go right down the list. The setting and the theme, it's very pasted on, of course. Uh, being higher or lower on the mountain has no meaning whatsoever in the game. It's an attractive setting. I think it's a. It's nice that it's not something that we're, you know, very accustomed to in board gaming themes. So that's nice, but it really is completely meaningless. The aesthetics, uh, some good, some bad here. I think it's a lovely cover. I do, and I. I, um, I wish there was more artwork like this one in the game. But there's really not. The wooden pieces are very nice, but then uh, the scoring track on the table is terrible. It does this sort of shoots up, and then you wind your way down. It's just very annoying scoring table uh, that attempts to be thematic. And if there's one place where, folks, I wish you would stop being thematic, is on your scoring track. Uh, it's um, it's going to have usability problems if you try to be too clever with it. Leave the scoring track alone. It's just a scoring track. Put it on the outside in a very clean loop, whatever. Be thematic elsewhere. So this one does that. And then it also has a really cramped feeling. If you are someone who has very large hands, perhaps your hands shake, uh, this is going to get messy, okay? Very cramped. The board is quite small and everything is sort of on top of everything else. The replay value here is my biggest hit. I think it's quite low. Um... I would say, in fact, there's almost no replay value in this game. It doesn't feel like I'm learning anything from new plays. And I try to continue playing, and I just... It doesn't seem like it matters a whole lot. You're going to be doing the exact same thing. You are, you know, collecting. You you might like some powers better than others, but there's really not a whole lot to, to do that's different than the last time you did. You're going to be scoring the same three things. You know, if your opponent is going for one thing, then do a different thing. I mean, it's a very, very obvious, you know, ideas that you're going to pick up on the first five, ten minutes of the game. The first game. And the next game will feel just like that one and so on. The game arc. Well, just around the time where the game starts to get clever, and again, I, I bring back to mind the uh, my, my comparison with Longhorn, because they really are somewhat similar if you if you play them both um in that game you're sort of you know there's a this idea of having your opponent end up somewhere that is locked up and then it's done the game kind of you know seizes up and then you go to scoring sometimes you want to do that to your opponent sort of drive them into a dead end in this game there is no such thing in fact if you begin at a peak that is fully filled by pieces that are not animals then uh, then you just move the, the the guide somewhere else where you can take a turn and you just keep going, okay? So that's not something that's a, a viable strategy in this game. You know, they don't skip a turn. They don't, they don't do anything. Um, and so right around the time when the game starts to get to the point where you do feel like you might be able to make some clever plays where you can go, well, you know, if I take you here, you only have this one animal you can take. If you take that one, you send me to peak two over here. And then at peak two, I can get the fifth of that kind of animal. Right around that time, the game's going to be over. And uh, that's unfortunate, because while I think it does not outstay its welcome, I think it's a good game length, by the time it gets around to becoming clever, interesting, a little bit more engaging, you sort of start to see, you know, the, the, the thought process start to uptick a little bit, boom, the game wraps up right then and there. Uh, ease of play. Yes, it's very easy. The game's very straightforward. It's easy to play. Good, clear rule book. No problems there. And then lastly, tactics, luck, strategy. Look, if I think, if you if you want to try this out, I would recommend you put that optional scoring in right away. It really does liven up the game a little bit. It gives you something else to think about. You know, this idea of uh, the area control thing at the end, or you know, whatever uh, you want to call it, um, is important. And it's a necessary part, I think, of what's going on in this game. If you ignore that scoring... 
everything is quite obvious. And the and sort of the push and pull between, well, I want to take this animal, but if I do so, I send you to that peak where you have quite a bit of control. In fact, you're going to put your fourth colored piece there, right? And I don't want that. It's going to be a bonus point at the end of the game. If you take that away, all the moves feel samey. And there is no big drive behind us. no duality to what you should do but maybe shouldn't do. There's none of those things. Um, the leaps in scoring can be fun, you know. When you sort of go through a few pedantic turns in a row and then you, you take one where you go, okay, now I did steps one, two, and three, and now I'm going to score this many animals. And I jump up the score track. That can be fun. You know, you do that a few times in the game. But overall, it's quite flat. And one thing that I and everyone I've played with kept coming back to was, well, the game just... Everybody just sort of shrugs their shoulders and go, well, it's not exciting, you know. It's not that interesting. And at this point, with how many two-player games there are out there, and just games in general, that's just not good enough. A game that isn't exciting doesn't have uh, a very, uh, you know, high engagement, just isn't going to come to the table. And we're not hurting for abstract games. We're certainly not even hurting for abstract games with a pasted on theme. There's tons of those, too. So, at the end of the day, is the game broken? Is there anything wrong with it? No, the game works. In fact, it kind of feels like, a, like somebody decided to... It almost feels like the kind of game that would come out of like a game design exercise. You know what I mean? Like, you have an hour, here's some animal meeples, come up with an idea. And then this mechanically linked game came out of that. And that's that's interesting, you know, the, 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 the sort of gears within gears. When you take an animal, you move the guy to the other peak, and then he bounces from that peak to another one. Okay, I get that. But it's... Then I don't know if I was judging that contest and this this was the winner. I don't know if I would then go, okay, time to publish this thing. Um, so it's not a bad game and mechanically it is solid. It's just not a fun game and it's certainly not an exciting game. And it's not one I would recommend to folks looking for a two-player abstract-ish kind of game. There are so many other choices for that. So for me, this is going to get a 4 out of 10. I would definitely say you can safely skip this one. If you find yourself somewhere where someone puts this in front of you and goes, let's try it, try it. It's 20 minutes or so. Um, what's it say? They say 30 on the cover. It's quick. It's like 20, 25 minutes. And uh, I don't think you're going to regret having done it, but probably play a different game for 30 minutes and you'll, you'll have a better time with it, I think. So there you go. That's Nanga Parbat. Uh, four out of ten for me, folks. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.